When war broke out in the Ukraine, the UK government were under pressure to provide a response regarding the 7 million or so refugees heading out of the country. The Homes for Ukraine scheme was widely criticised in the media for its strict eligibility criteria, administrative processes and reliance on existing ties between countries to provide homes for these people fleeing conflict. But how are the beneficiaries faring two months on? We had the privilege of meeting two of them. So my name is Anastasia. I'm 22 years old. I'm from Ukraine, from Kiev, and uh, I'm here in uh, London, Dagenham, with my nine-month-old daughter, Grace. Let's go. <laughs> so there's kitchen. There's, uh, they also gave us this uh, baby chair for Grace. So she has her own chair. Uh, there's a lot of toys for them. Um, our babies not really into toys, they love everything that they cannot touch, <laughs> like everything in the kitchen. So I'm a member, one of the members of the Ukrainian church, and this Ukrainian church, I've been friends with church that are over here in Dagenham, and uh, our pa pastors, they are like connected. So uh, our pastor told us that they have uh, some people over here that want to be host for Ukrainians. From our church because like we like we know each other uh, they didn't want to uh, like take some pe new people they don't know so it was like safe uh, so there is my room and grace's room this is my big bed <laughs> and this bed is for grace they also got in for from the local people they got this for us like almost everything that for, for babies they got everything for us, like uh, wipes and diapers, and uh, yeah, there's a lot of stuff I need for her, like her baby formula, water, health, <laughs> <laughs> and this one, flowers my, my husband gave me, uh, we had her second anniversary. <laughs> like many refugees, Anastia's family are now scattered in different countries, pursuing safety, work, and fighting to keep the Ukraine's infrastructure alive. Uh, my husband is in Kyiv region right now. My uh, dad, he's in army. Uh, my mom, she, and my sister, they are in Poland, but they are coming here. Oh. My mom is also, she stayed in this house with me, but she left Poland to meet my sister, to help her go to Ukraine with some clothes, and they are coming here. My sister will be also, uh, she will use sponsorship, but in another house. But what of the much discussed visa application process? What is it like for someone in Ukraine who does have access to the internet? It was uh, kind of difficult because we didn't know anything about it. But now I think I can help someone to do this because I, now I know almost everything. And uh, my hosts helped me. So we were like, we have, we had uh, Zoom meetings and he just like helped me to do the application for visa. Yes, but I had some difficulties uh, because I didn't have a foreign passport. Like I have only Ukrainian passport because I got married and I didn't change my foreign passport. Like it's on my maiden name. Yes, and my daughter, she's also didn't have a foreign passport. So only birth certificate was her, only her document. Uh, but there, um, in the beginning of work, we had the opportunity to leave Ukraine only with Ukrainian documents. Now we don't have this opportunity anymore. Yes. In some respects, Tarsia and Grace could be considered lucky. Many are still struggling to connect with sponsors, especially via social media. Uh, my mom, is, she's always saying in, in Facebook, <laughs> and she's always saying that, uh, yes, there's a lot of people are looking for sponsors, and I know one girl, she's my friend, and she's also looking for sponsors. But she's like she's not from the church that I am, so people over here like they don't know her. So yeah, they're more more interested in uh, people there are that they, are, they know. There's our buggy that we took from Ukraine, um, but it's too big for uh, London uh, underground. <laughs> so a lot of people are gave us this buggy. It's smaller. So thanks to her, them. It's really helpful. My mom uh, and my dad, they have a house in Kiev region, where my husband is now uh, staying. So this village is really small 
and when the war started i was like mom dad please like uh leave this place because it will be not safe and they were like no who, who needs a small village and uh, yes they needed it <laughs> and this village was in occupation so my parents were in occupation for like two weeks i think yeah it was really hard like when uh, your mom like texting you just like they're all here we are like we are hiding um yeah and um, they had no light had no food <sighs> yes but um, they wanted to, to leave the village some people um, were trying to escape by themselves on their cars but they were got shot and at this day uh, exactly this day the, the people were shot our our government um, make like we call it a green corridor when people are able to escape uh, the occupied village or city so like they got buses for these people and they're like uh, and the russian soldiers are like getting them to leave so yeah they are they will use this it was really a risk uh, for her for her them they were really worried it will not work they will just be killed but yeah they, they, they escaped and it was it's good but it's like a miracle that their house are just like not destroyed at all because uh, they had tanks on like in their neighborhoods and they were like pretty sure they will come over for, for, for them like um yeah but my dad he's like he's crazy <laughs> he was like uh he, he took a walk on the streets of this village which it when it was occupied and he met the russian soldiers and he was like um i need to go to feed the chicken in my neighborhood <laughs> can you please allow me to do this and they were like okay go <laughs> but be careful like there might be mines and uh yeah he okay. went to his neighborhood's house <laughs> and uh, there was <coughs> no more gates in this house and the tank was in the house so he was like okay there's no more chicken probably <laughs> Yeah, so my mom, she's really into garden, so my house are like, you can uh, take uh, do everything you want in our garden, so if you want. <laughs> yeah, they, are all, they also uh, took my mom to the garden center, just so she will be happy <laughs> to see some flowers, <laughs> which was really cute. Like, you need to win. If we will just surrender, if it will, war will come in, in the next years. Like, uh, war started in 2014 when uh, Crimea was occupied yeah, and uh, like every, everyone just like forget about it and mm. yes, we just let them take this uh, uh, land and uh, now they came again so like it's, uh, uh, it's a bad choice to do this again like to give them the uh, lands that they want uh, to, to have because uh, they will come again and take us bite by bite and I'm pretty sure not just us. So, yeah, we need to win or our war will start again later.